Radio Hereford FC, the only station with full match commentaries of the Bulls, every game, every week. Hello again and welcome to We're Going Down the Pub with me, Frank Williams. And for the 29th... It never is. It is the 29th time this season, and possibly for the last time this mm. season, we mm. shall see. Mr Simon Wright is with oh. us. Yet again, he spent a whole week in Herefordshire. Oh, oh that'd be right. We can a bit. We could have been. Oh, that'd be right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see you've come back with all the smells. Uh, <laughs> you should see the state of the car after a week in Herefordshire. <laughs> oh, I, I, I drive down to Hereford. I, 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 I never wash my car now on a Friday. No. Because no. driving down to Hereford, doesn't matter what the weather's like, you go no. down Great Wheat, Lee, Bromyard, doesn't matter which way you go. No. Uh, whatever, you always come back absolutely caked It's one mud. muddy county, yeah. isn't it? Sunday it is. is the time for washing cars. I think it is, mate. Post Hereford. But there you go. Yeah. Right, so we're here to yeah. talk about. The last uh, league away game of the mm-hmm. season. We'll, we'll explain why it may not be the last one a little bit later. This is the match at Evesham, Evesham. which it's you visited not so long ago, I seem no, to remember. that's right. That's a matter right. of weeks. It's a matter of weeks. Rather than decades, in the no. case of some <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it was a few weeks ago, and I had um, an interesting conversation with a, a club official, but that's probably not... Not the most positive conversation I've ever had, but maybe right. just having a bad day. But not to worry. Um, yeah, I mean, Evesham's easy for us back country oh, balls, isn't it? Just down the road. Absolutely. And it's yeah. Evesham for, easy for Shire folk as well, isn't it? Yeah, should 40, be. 45 miles, stroll in the park, innit? Um, but I mean, I did Evesham, but I do want to say a big thank you to all the ground volunteers who've racked up at some pretty obscure places all uh, over all the season, south and west yeah, yeah, yeah all season absolutely um, i mean with that brilliant. though we'd be playing an awful lot of music to cover up the gaps wouldn't um, we <laughs> <laughs> done that before <laughs> yes. yeah absolutely. Um, well wembley one for example oh we did that. gosh yeah, we did music, we though. did yeah um, every single one of, of, uh, of all the volunteers that they come through with some great content and well before deadlines there was no heart attacks in that direction and what was really pleasing that most of the volunteers said how much they enjoy the experience of oh, visiting oh, visiting the clubs yeah and, and meeting going people on at them. yeah yeah, yeah and, oh. and um, without even asking I've got volunteers already to cover about half of the grounds for next season right so that's all that's all grand and, and that's including Kings Lynn oh good old Lynn I'm glad you were yeah, there yeah good old Kings <laughs> And Big so, Pat. Oh, sorry. Uh, big Pat. I, I, sorry, I misread Nixon. it. Big Pat's on the back all round. Yeah, yeah Big Pat's yeah. on the... Oh, goodness yeah. me. Can't, so, get the, can't get the... So, Lynn and, yeah. Pat, Lynn and Pat, thank you very much. Yeah, and everybody else. Yeah. So, I will be in touch in May. Yeah. And while we're handing out bouquets for end of season, let's say big thanks to Adam Mann of Evesham. Uh, Adam Mann, Adam indeed. Man. What, what a man, man. Yeah. yeah. And if you're listening, Adam, and, you know, strange things have happened... You've made an awful lot of people very happy with your very late second goal for Evesham against Taunton. Just a oh, couple of weeks minutes. back, 96 minutes, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, uh, I mean, <laughs> it was 10 minutes between the final whistle at Salisbury and the final whistle of Evesham. It would have been quite nice, actually, if you'd have just sort of stuck it in on the 89th minute. Yeah, maybe exactly, then, yeah. Maybe yeah. then the referee might have thought, well, I don't know whether oh, no. He was only adding it on to see if Taunton would uh, <laughs> yeah. have a Come back. <laughs> it's sort of Man United game he played until they yeah. score. But yeah. So yeah. he's a, he's a so part of our history. history in yeah. a very, very positive way. Yep. And you know, curiously, nobody's ever mentioned Jordan Bryan, who actually scored the first the goal. First goal. Which exactly. is a crucial goal, the, really. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. You know, he couldn't have the second without the first. So well done to you, Jordan Bryan, as well. Yeah. I mean, not many opposition players are going to be featuring in Hereford FC's history in the years to come from this season. There's only Jamie Ford and Ian Oliver spring to mind. Do you remember why? Own goals? Yes. Yeah. I do remember the one. Which one was it that uh, scored that own goal that took it off Pablo's boot and lobbed it over his goalkeeper? That was um, that was Ian Oliver for... Ooh, do you know if, if, it was a dead. AFC Tottenham. Yeah. Because actually, 
Actually, I think if he hadn't done that, Pablo Haitian would have done exactly the same. Because <laughs> he was about to chip it over the goalkeeper when he had it taken off. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this is how you do really, it. Yeah, this is how you really do it. really annoyed about that, I would think, with Pablo. Because he's thinking, I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really clever chip. It was, yeah. If you'd been the other end, I may have attempted to applaud. But, um, and Jamie Ford, Jamie Ford just scored another own goal just a couple of weeks back. So, uh, overall for the season, because he's got one for his own club, Winchester, he's actually minus one. No. <laughs> Right, a bit yeah. of history. Yeah, a bit of history. Shimmer. Well, they haven't been around that long, actually. They've, they were founded after World War Two by ex-servicemen who basically presumably wanted to play football. Um, I do remember Evesham's old ground because, you know, they're not being the new one for long. I never visited it myself. No, no, it wasn't. Well, it's just interesting in a way. It's very central, frankly a bit tatty and distinctly windy. But, you know, it was their ground. And I do remember one fixture I got to there. This is... Uh, uh, when Tucker Truick took an Albion youth team there for a Birmingham Senior Cup fixture. Now, uh, do bear with me, because this was in the days of Tam, Carey Bertram, Adam Chambo, Junior Smichael, half the future Hereford team, really. Um, and the pitch was so hard with ice that Tucker audibly told his players, no tackling tonight, well, he spent a whole career telling people not to tackle. <laughs> yeah. and, pass of, and passable sideways. sideways. Yeah. Oh, I've got a lot of time for Tucker, so I'm not going to be unkind to him, but... And it was a really strange cold night, and Evesham won well. Evesham won 1 0. Distinct lack of tackling all around. It was a very, very strange sort of skating thing, but there you go. Now, Evesham had been wanting to move for a long time, but it took them four years to actually do it. And in the meantime, they basically just had to play anywhere they could, which is mainly St George's Lane at Worcester. All right. Now, I'm pretty men St George's Lane, big old barn of a ground. I love that ground. I absolutely love that Mm. ground. Mm, I sort of miss it now, don't I? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. It was a barn of a ground. I remember seeing John Charles having to play in goal. No. Yes, it was. It was was in probably Worcestershire Senior Cup. And um, uh, I can't remember the goalkeeper was. Whether the goalkeeper went off injured... Uh, or not because no substitutes but John Charles went in goal good heavens uh, and we actually look, we did lose it oh, I know but uh, that was, uh, somebody will be perhaps Ron Parrott, Ron Parrott will be, be able to be our man I remember way. that distinctly oh, but it was, it was an old barn of a ground but yeah. again uh, yeah, you've got to love grounds like that to bits, really. Well, I'm sad we'll, they're gone. Now we're losing them, but yeah, uh, absolutely. You can, but you can imagine Evesham's hundred supporters. They looked a bit lost in <laughs> the ground that big. Yes. And um, I, I saw Hales Owen Town play there one year, and Hales Owen had more than the home, so-called home side. It was like peas in a drum, strange one. Um, Evesham themselves, we, we're totally talking about the history. They've only actually ha- had one season in Step Three, and that was a decade ago. And ever since then, they've been trying to get back to that elevated stage. Yeah, they've been doing reasonably well over mm. the years, though. They're Ooh. always there or thereabouts, aren't they? It must be, it must be so frustrating. I mean, they got the, got in the playoffs two years ago. Yeah. Last season, they just missed it, finished sixth. And this season, they really went for it. They got loads of people in from Cinderford, who were yeah, the previous every, champions. Everybody seems to have got loads of people in from Cinderford. Cinderford yeah. Us? Yeah. Yes, yeah? Yep, uh, we have. Loads of other people have as well. In fact, Cinderford must have had a, a squad... A sort of in, in the region of 50 or 60 players <laughs> because everybody says oh we've got half a dozen players from them so, yeah. and you think well hang on a minute how many players do they have <laughs> <laughs> well, they certainly haven't got many left this season from last no. season's result but um, just a couple of names I'll mention to the Evesham squad I think most people will remember Kevin Sawyer the goalkeeper yep well rounded yep. chap shall we say yes 36, 450 games for all sorts of clubs, and he's still going. I don't quite know how he does it, but there you go. They've used 32 players this season, that's which is quite a, it's a lot for a playoff that's team, isn't it? It's a lot for a team up there. I mean, one team you said had used 40, 40 odd, and yeah. they're at the bottom. and that's, They are, yeah. You know, understandable yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, sort of thing. But to use 32 so when you're near the top... It's unusual. Uh, yeah. It is unusual. They've got about a hard, hard core of six or so. They've been with them three or four years, and they just play around them, really. Apart from the odd drug dealer, they all seem very, very normal people. Uh, utterly predictable you've obviously jobs. put that in for me to ask you what do you, <laughs> what do you mean by apart from the odd drug dealer? There's a member of their squad. He may not be there anymore. I mean, I'm not going to mention name names particularly. He has played them for for them for maybe five or six times. He has um, spent a number of years in prison because he led a major drugs gang. Right, and mm. you don't think he's there anymore? 
It's difficult. It's difficult to tell, to be honest. You may have left them on a high, though. Ah, oh, you know. you've been saving that one up, haven't you? <laughs> I didn't even know we were going to talk. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, let's gratuitously plug Adam Mann again. He's yeah. ex Gloucester City. He Decent got, player. He got thirty last season for them. Yeah. He hasn't scored that many this season, though. Um, he did miss a number of games because he went on holiday and got bitten, which is a bit unfortunate. <laughs> do, do we know by what he was bitten? Well, or by, uh, or by whom? Well, I, I, I'm kind of assuming it was an insect, but uh, who knows? Well, you know, yeah, that, it wasn't explained in any great detail. Yeah. Um, and in case you're wondering, Sam Pearson. Sam yeah, Pearson, remember him? I ex, do believe ex, scored ex, Hereford FC's first ever allegedly, goal. Allegedly, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is the yeah. strangest goal you've ever seen. It didn't yes. actually cross the line even. But, <laughs> but it was it's given. On the records, yeah. It's on the records, yeah. It was given. It is on the records, yeah. The yeah. First ever, yeah. He's only started one game, and the poor oh, chap's been out injured most of the season, so that's a bit of a blow for him. It is indeed. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah. Turn page quickly. Yeah. Okay, we have a. Uh, we have a new ground to go to. Of course, it's an out of town ground. It's pretty much got fields all the way around it. Um, five years old, and it does look rather smart. Um, uh, Disciples will be pleased to know that all the concourses are flat, so it'll suit them. Um, right. Two sides of the ground, there's training pitches for Evesham's 22 teams. Not all at once, presumably. No, no, no that would be... Yeah, yeah, they've got six yeah. changing rooms. Good so facilities, yeah. 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 There's one stand set back from the touchline, which will be segregated 50-50, you know. It's not usual, it just segregate the seats, you know. I mean, are they worried about travel rugs or thermos flasks being thrown around, you know, or walking sticks? Now, I know post hour hard walking six can be because I've felt a certain one a few times when we were indoors but uh, do you remember that old chant Frank you may not be old enough seats are evil uh, seats I, are evil I remember no, maybe it now, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, not yeah. the person to remind me of musical things though are you really? <laughs> I, I never quite catch a tune off you but there <laughs> <laughs> that's quite <laughs> subtle yeah, yeah, they're having to make some ground improvements because they're taking on a tenant yeah year. that's right Gloucester City are moving in next year they're still homeless so they, they've just opened uh, an uncovered terrace behind one goal and a uh, new block of turnstiles, so that's going to be handy for us. You know, it's a 3,000 capacity ground, but when you get there, you think, hmm, this doesn't feel like a 3,000 capacity ground because it's all the spectator facilities are quite low down right. and seem quite small. There's that spectacular view of Breeden Hill. Yeah, love it. Yeah, I've, mm. I've spent most of my. Most of my college days at Breeden Hill, doing um, work on the mud flows of Breeden Hill. When I back in the late sixties, yeah, I'd go and stick pegs in. You realise we were doing this geography course um, at Worcester, uh, and I spent about three winters doing this before I realised all I was actually doing was getting my lecturer, George Minshall, his PhD, basically, because he was getting all the research on it. We were doing all the work, sticking these ranging poles in the mud flow and then measuring how far they moved. I had to go back once once a week, sort of thing, and measure the distance with the... Well, anyway, that's a bit... Actually, you know, you just you mentioned something interesting about Gloucester, the homeless. Worcester, homeless. Mm. Of the three counties, yeah, you know, the three counties. Well, we are lucky that we're not homeless, aren't we? Really, after a couple of years ago, you could have had the, the three county towns and the three counties all with teams who are homeless. Fortunately, we're not. We are the one who actually. Do you know, you're right. There. Yeah, it could have been such a. But it's a shame we're not Tonyans, wouldn't we? <laughs> God forbid. Yeah. They're gonna stand, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. As uh, has been announced, and they've just gone on sale. The match is all ticket. Yeah. So we need to order via our online system. Yeah. It's all up and running. Yep. Nine pound adults concession, six pound under sixteens, two pound postage, three pound, which is a, a, li a little bit annoying. Is that but three pound per ticket. It's three. It appears to be three pound, regardless of number of tickets. But ah, quite, right. But quite right too, yeah. really. I mean, yeah. 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 But it's still a big chunk, yeah. unless you collect. But you can only collect, I think, on Wednesdays and Fridays, which for exercise isn't a great deal of use. No. But there are. Um, there's a home game between now and then, isn't there? Mm. Yeah, we have got a home game. Well, well we have, but it's yeah. specifically said if you can't collect Wednesdays or Fridays. But anyway, perhaps I misread it. Moving yeah. on rapidly. Okay. Um, there's no segregation elsewhere in the grounds. And so big things up, big thumbs up to Evesham there for not overreacting as uh, the pubs do. Yeah. And using our stewards. Yeah. Uh, it's just good sense really. 
but they do have a rather daunting notice uh, on their block of tour the styles. Um, and they've had this at pre didcot so let's not say it's the didcot thing. And the notice states that anyone using bad language or any type of poor sportsmanship will be ejected and banned for life. Well, that really is a, it's a, just a catch-all job. <laughs> so presumably the entire Didcot squad are now banned from ever playing there again. Well, if they I'll play at the door, if yeah. They, if they haven't <laughs> played there at all. And most, well, there are one or two other teams that might have Yeah, I think yeah. Claridge, I would Claridge would be the obvious be, one, yeah. But, yeah. But any type of poor, poor, poor sportsmanship, I'm not even sure what that is, but there you go. Yeah. Um, I, I do... Really hope it's, it's going to be a bit like Shepshed last season, which is just a fun day. Yeah, it was it? a fun day. It was a great really, day. Really, really good yeah. one. And Westfields had a, uh, a, a Shepshed last Saturday, and they had a fun day, didn't they? One, one in the night. Five, four. Five, four, one? nine goal thriller. Yeah, they had a nice day out there. Yeah, and Westfield scoring five yeah. goals in itself is remarkable Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, if Evesham are safely in the playoffs, and they're looking pretty safe. Yeah. Safety in the playoffs, that's going to take a lot of tension well, away. Well, Mandersfield shipped six, didn't they, it's against Torsten, so yeah. that's probably, you know, that was their only chance, I think, Mandersfield, you know, the only yeah. team that could um, conceivably catch them. Possibly, possibly, and, uh, yeah. Even if they would, uh, their goal difference has taken a big yeah. hammer in yeah. there, so. Yeah, yeah I, I think they're probably think safely, they're safe, but, safely through. But, you know, we still got targets of our own. Absolutely. Firstly, to avoid 160 mile, that's oh. one way, trek, yes. to Royston. If we have to do this in the way ground, Guide to Royston. Yeah. We're not looking forward to it. No, so if you're listening, no. if you're listening, any of the players listening out there, please. can you please make sure you get <laughs> you get enough points get on the board so we yeah. don't have to go to Royston? Yeah. It is a long, long, long way. Yeah. And the current record for number of points gained in the South, Southern League South and West is 102. I would hope that's one. Doable. So yeah. we can get seven in our remaining five games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That would be yeah. nice. Okay. No. What about parking? Parking. Yeah. I mean, it's a new ground. It's got. Thankfully, it's got parking on two sides. So, maybe 250 vehicles. It's quite right. a decent size. Yeah. Um, they may be overflowing onto the training pitches with cars. Now, it does say ample parking, so I can't imagine that's what they mean. Yeah. But if that's not a goer, then. The last side street in Cheltenham Road, that's the road that we will have to drive up to get to. Yeah. The last side street on the left, it's a popular alternative, so that's your fallback position. In terms right. of refreshments, though, that's the right. important thing. Yes, says he, pausing for supping his BFG. Cheers. That's a great idea. Mm. Mm. Work this. Good. You would probably have seen Simon's photograph of the outside of the wagon horses, which he was passing by earlier today. He took a photograph of it, uh, which he uh, he put up on Facebook, because the dray wagons had just arrived, and there were barrels, what, how many, 20, oh, 25 must, yes, barrels? Yes, must have been. Outside, and just and waiting for he and I to I arrive. I don't think we can go through quite that many not in the school no. right? but there you go we'll they've try all gone. yeah they've all gone they've all gone somewhere certainly <laughs> yeah. hmm. right now we have been to Evesham before their new ground we, we went there as Hereford United and playing for friendly in 2014 and the clubhouse was really really big really smart got big leather chairs which I'm, I'm a great fan of big leather chairs wasn't that match abandoned it was because painfully, of an injury. Painfully, yeah. Whose injuries? Um, yeah, two of our play. trialists yeah. ran into each other. Right. It's really trying to make a difference, and they yeah. made it a difference on each other's head, unfortunately. Oh, right. Um, one was Chris Carruthers. I honestly can't remember the other guy, but they both ended up in hospital. A lot of stitches. The game was abandoned. Right. Being terribly selfish, it was a bit of relief because the game was really boring. But there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. I mean, like that. But, um, since we were there, there's a, there a vandal broke into the clubhouse and basically left the beer taps running and flooded the place, which is really, really unnecessary. So I'm not sure whether all those lovely furnishings were. Why do people replaced. always break into clubhouses after we visited? I mean, it's happened uh, this year at Mangotsfield, if I remember. Oh yes, somebody yes. broke in after we yeah. visited. Perhaps we were leaving people behind. Oh, well, something like yeah. that. But. Uh, yeah, and left the beer taps running. Running, yeah. yeah. Well, what idiot in his right mind would waste beer? Yeah. I mean, you sit there, at break in, sit there all yeah, night yeah. and drink, drink it. it. Yeah. It's almost, uh, you know, almost an acceptable offence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just letting Less it go to waste. Five hundred quid's worth of beer, oh. and five grams worth of damage to the furniture. Yeah. Now, um, 
I wouldn't get too excited about the beverages that's normally on offer here, because they're Carling, Coors and John Smith. Right, we take it all back, what we said about the bloke who broke in, all right, we take it all back now. You were actually doing the, uh, the world of beer drinkers a great favour, mate, okay, so well done to you, whoever you were. I don't mean that, of course. No, no, um, we are promised additional food and drink outlets, we, right. we do sort of hope there'll be a little more interesting choice. Now, of course, because it's on the edge of town, yeah. there's be a lot of old food, isn't it? Pretty bluntly, yeah. Oh. I could have got thrown up using the word sub, couldn't I? <laughs> oh dear. Right, OK. There's no refreshments within walking distance, so... On the road in, um, the last pub before you get to the ground, and we're talking two miles from the ground, is a place called the Cider Mill on Persia Road. Now, I've only got one real ale, an old speckled hen. Right. But it does have a really large beer garden, and, you know, you're hoping for good weather, so that could work. Oh, the town centre's good, but yeah. as I say, it's a bank holiday, yeah. and Evesham is quite touristy, really. It's very touristy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. on the river and so on. It's a mm. bank holiday Monday, if it's a nice day. Could be difficult parking. I think, I think it could be yeah. a really... I think it'd be jolly, jolly, jolly vexatious. There you go. That, but there are, in the there are some nice pubs. There are the some same. gorgeous pubs. I mean, the one everybody raves about is the old Red House. Although, curiously, it's Red Horse. Red, the Red Horse, even. The yes, old they, Red Horse. The old Red Horse, yes. Thank you for putting him straight. Yeah, but he's not red at all. He's black and white. Black and white, yeah. yeah. I don't know whether they just painted it because we're in town. <laughs> Possibly not. But. <laughs> now, that's in Vine Street, but you know everybody knows where that is. Right. Real Ale, HPA, and Wells Bombardier. Bombardier on draft. A, yeah, is that oh. a favourite? Well, it's one of the better bottled beers to start oh. with, but Bombardier. Oh. On draft. Oh, don't forget it's an afternoon kickoff, but I'm gonna get there early in the morning, have a nice, mm. nice lunch, mm. and a pint of bombardier, and then wander over the river to the to the match. Yeah, it's, might it's even, better. You might even be able to get picked up as we'll uh, find. Oh out. yes, yes. They yes. do yes. shuttle buses. Don't yeah, they? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean. The, the old Red Horse also serves food. They've also got a beer garden, so it gets better and better. Uh, and also for people who aren't too fussy, there's Carling, Fosters, Worthington and Strongbow also on tap. And um, even accommodation for those who just can't bear to leave. So there you go. And we have to mention where the spoons because people course, get upset. Course, yeah, course, the yeah, yeah. local spoons is the old Swan Inn. And that's Swan with two ends and in with two ends as usual. Um, and an E. And an yeah. extra E. Yeah, um, no extra The old Swan E in E. The old Swan in the High Street, no, no, obviously. Yeah. Um, what you'd expect, Ruddles, yeah, Abbots, yeah. Shipyard, Pale Ale, yeah, and great. Doombar. Ah, yeah. Right. yeah. Well, actually, it's very unusual for us to find Doombar this far, this far north, isn't it, really? It always seems to be... Uh, oh, all the clubs have been, it's spreading. It I know really it's your favourite. I know uh, it's your favourite, yeah. But alarmingly, yeah. in their, what they class as real ale or craft beer, mm -hmm. they've got John Smith's. Oh, you've put here that that's disturbing. I mean, well, the mere, uh, it's disturbing because they've actually got well, it. No, or disturbing, disturbing because, because they, they actually list it as real ale or craft beer. Mm. Yeah, and it does make you wonder, well, if that's the definition of real ale and craft beer, what they're doing to the other beers. But well, it's, uh, yeah, that is yeah. disturbing, yeah. Okay. It's a strange one. Car journey, dead easy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Junction 7, basically, yeah. go through Pershaw, keep going. You don't, unless you want a beer in the town centre, you don't have to go in the town centre at all. You don't need to sell it now, but it is so easy to get yeah. to. No motorway at all. Straight through Lysington to Worcester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Cross over the motorway to um, Pershaw, Evesham, and, uh, and there you are. It's a very pleasant run. It is. It's really, really a very pleasant run. Yeah. And you can go by train, should you wish to. Oh. <laughs> Luxury, you know, even on a bank holiday. It um, depends on what train you go on. It could be an hour, it could be an hour and a half. Um, right. Station is two miles from the ground, but then again, the ground's two miles from everywhere, basically, so it's not a great surprise. Now, the Evesham Supporters Club, they do have a minibus. I've seen it. It's a 15-seater minibus. And they do a free pickup from Little in Port Street at 1.50. But the question is going, you know, going to be, can they cope with their numbers? Uh, I would imagine the answer is no. going to be no on that one. It is a minibus. They don't have a fleet of them. Uh, OK, if you want a book from Hereford Away Days, you'll go to their Facebook page, of course, and just book with Reg. I don't know whether the details are up there yet. yet. Uh, I'm not certain, but I would imagine it's going to be a tenner. It's I'm sure it's a tenner, yeah. yes. It's a tenner, and you, got, you, you have to book your own ticket for this one. Yeah, yeah. And I would imagine um, there will probably be more than one coach going over. Oh, I think so. I think so. It's very yeah. convenient. Yeah. So there you go. 
That is the last of our regular uh, league coverage. Maybe, 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 yeah, maybe. we'll see. Mm. There may maybe be a trip, a trip to, to Roy Royston yeah. Vasey coming up. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, I mean, that, that is a club for local people, isn't it? Well, it's something left to play for this season. Yeah, mm -hmm. We've got the championship. Let's now, let's now make sure we've got a home tie in this championship oh, yes. playoff. Yes. Because that would be a great way of finishing the season, wouldn't it, really? And it means that we could rank it within that last season because it would be a treble. Well, if we can get the Senior Cup as well, mm -hmm. it would um, be a treble. There two cups. could be two cups up for uh, that yeah, weekend. Yeah. yeah. On the Saturday and the, uh, and the Monday. Uh, for the uh, HFA Senior Cup final. The Mighty Lads Club. The Mighty Lads Club, yeah, and unusual. Oh, Westfield are so disappointed, aren't they? <laughs> Not only were they hoping that they would stage it this time, um, but of course they thought then, you know, that they, uh, 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 they didn't get yeah, Their season has fallen away somewhat. Right, thanks very much, all of you, for listening, and we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. This is Radio Hereford FC, the home of the Bulls. Match Day Live.